because when we do this, I always tell them, it's your emotion you put in it. If you're scared, it's going to show. So if you love it, it's going to show. So, so far, everybody's in love with it. <laughs> My name is Russell Mather. I'm from Lock Palams, British Columbia. I live and work in Lock Palams and in Prince Rupert. My upbringing, I was around my grandfather, Solomon Gray, and he held the name Wadi Meloy. He was Skinadoik's Lachibu. And he instilled in me the uh, art and the culture, and there's laws and processes, protocols around it. And he made sure that the protocols were always followed. So I've been practicing that for my entire artistic cultural life. I am from Lachwalans. We have nine tribes over Lachwalans and this area, along with the Metacatlas and our cousins and neighbors up river. When did I start and how did I get into it? I thought, well, for me, that's, that's a really good question. For me, the times were different. I said, uh, I lived in Lac Valams, and I was six years old when this all started, this journey. And back then, we were lucky if we had Channel 6, which is CHDK, if the weather was good. So if we didn't have snowy TV, we'd go out and play with our friends. Or uh, I used to go to my grandfather's a lot just to visit and listen to him share Adele and Melsk in exchange some chores around his house. And as I got older and stronger, then the processes grew, just like my chores for him grew. So it was win-win, we both won. Usually ended with a hard candy, he had a bowl of hard candies or he'd call pop freshy because he, he couldn't speak very fluent English. He was the other way. He was more Somalia than English. So I had him, and that's my, my mother's father. I had him in my life growing up as, as a young lad. And on my dad's side, it was my grandmother, Clara. She was a strong woman. She was the anchor, that, the glue that held the family together. That was very fulfilling, uh, youth. I enjoyed it. The niche I, I feel is working with the youth and my approach to them was captivating them with our art processes. And when I got to work with them, as I do now, then the outreach can begin. Communication, it's key. Because the other thing I share with the kids when they're carving, or students, or apprentices, is other senses. There's the visual on the larger pieces, but I like to incorporate the listening. So as you get cutting, you hear that scraping or knifing noise, and then you try to mimic or repeat it. That way you know you have the right angle. I've had community members come in from Rupert. I've had elders come take part in here. Uh, children in organized groups come through. Having that pole being carved and painted in our school setting and having our students having access and having their hands on it and being involved with it and learning and asking questions, it's amazing. My name is Roberta Zertza. I am from Metlakatla, BC. I am of Zimshan ancestry, and my crest is Killer Well, and I live in Prince Rupert. I'm the district principal for Indigenous Education in SD52, and I work at Wapsigaget, the House of Building Strength. Wapsigaget is a place where we can gather and meet and collaborate and lead Indigenous education by Indigenous peoples. 
We aren't learning about Indigenous people in a vague sense. We're learning from Indigenous people, from Indigenous ways, and that's what makes the learning meaningful. Uh, my name is Lori Berger. I'm Niskat from a community of Gitlak Damics in the Nass Valley, uh, Giscast from the Kilaro Clan. I'm also um, Cree from Treaty 6 territory in Saskatchewan and Swedish and Norwegian on my father's side. Um, I am a curriculum specialist teacher for School District 52 here at Wapsigiget. We're always looking at ways to increase that um, rich cultural visualization for our students um, to show that representation is here and it marks the territory of the Tsimshan Indigenous peoples. And then there's been learning opportunities that have spanned, you know, from students to staff to um, school district staff on into the community. And there's just been lots of layers of learning that's been happening throughout. Owen Helene Diwayu, Blacky Booty Fidegu, Black Lam Steel Watu, John Helene Diwas Niayu, Ada Inas Helene Diwas Nzitsu, Ada Sim Shan Nuyu. And uh, my question is, can you explain the background of the totem pole, including the crests and symbols on them? Well, the Pulled came about in a discussion when the Charles Hayes learning comment was in the beginning of the plans and we wanted to make sure that the cultural space was highly represented in a way where uh, the community, families, educators, more importantly the students can come and appreciate and respect and ask questions as to what this poll means and look at ways that we can uh, inspire and keep the learning and dialogue going about truth and reconciliation. Uh, truth and reconciliation was part of the conversation and how to represent that for the Jinxian people. We went back to the four main crests. Eagle, Eagle, Raven, Wolf, Blackfish. A one crest would flow into the other. And the hope is to uh, infuse that with some butterflies in each crest. I'm used to just doing the pole straight on from the side approach, like the more common viewed poles in and around pain. Uh, this one, the challenge was, and I accepted it, how to incorporate all four crests of the Jimshian people. And it's gonna be housed in a library. The space it was gonna, or is gonna take up is limited. So it took a lot of figuring how to blend all four of the crests in. I'll put a fifth in there, the Adabees, the butterfly for the non-Jimshian. It'll be within the crests themselves. So uh, a few scratches here and there in the sketchbook and finally came up with um, the four crests complementing each other back to back. Before I moved on this, I went and met with the uh, stewards of the land, which is the Gitchis people, the Gitchis tribe. And I've had now three meetings with them. Um, and shared the vision, I shared the, the design, and they gave feedback. Uh, they were very interested because it was a 360. One of the things that we really wanted to ensure is that this project was going to have meaning for students um, while it was happening, as well as, as later on. It invokes dialogue that needs to be truthful and we need to, in order to get to reconciliation, we need to have the truth, which means learning. And that learning doesn't stop. It continues on uh, for many, many years. And we're proud of the work that's been done on the poll. Um, we don't take ownership of the poll. The poll belongs to the people and to the territory. and. We want to keep that learning going for a long time. It's a way of narrating our historical events 
proceedings as we go along in life.